The first one's called The Shooting Star. Saw a shooting star, it glittered across the dark sky. Like a lantern guiding angels, it shined. Saw its illuminating glow glaze onto darkness, brightness only for a moment. It shot by Jones Beach's tower, a light of shimmer. It sh van slowly vanished. Chris saw the star too. His young innocence was amazed. He was with me that night after a movie. We took a long drive. We were only friends and colleagues at work. Together, we shared a memory that night. Several years later, Chris had died. He was in a motorcycle accident. Now I realize that there were two shooting stars that night. One reminding me how beautiful the night sky appears. The other, to remember treasure times with friends. Because like shooting stars, time passes by so quickly and vanishes out of sight. Beautiful. Tossing a chair through a window, an ode to a retired captain. This may be hard to believe, that such an act of bravery, but on the day it happened, there were many things hard to conceive. Imagine the crashing sound it must have made. Comprehend the shattered prison flakes across the floor. Picture the startled young faces who witnessed this when a man tossed a chair through a window. He was a household name, a family friend, and my parents went to his wedding. He joined the New York City Fire Department, the bravest, with Dad. They retired on an exact same year. Dad is a lieutenant. He is a captain. Fire safety for the towers was the next t title for Jimmy. For his quick-witted actions after the first plane struck, he will always be remembered. Tossing a chair through a window, a door was locked. One could never believe. There are people alive today for the reaction he had made. He had thrown a chair through a window so children inside a nursery could be rescued and saved. He never made it out of the towers that September day. Firefighters are always firefighters, and saving lives is what they do. This retired fire captain's legacy lives on, heroic and true. Now his, both of his sons are both New York City firefighters, too. Wow. last year had breast cancer so I do a lot of poems for breast cancer so this one's called strong women a woman should be smiling in photography not dreading her yearly mammography her life should be long and prosperous not cut short not cut short by a debilitating illness she should be handed pink roses instead of honored in pink ribbons her body not cut open for removal an unscarred temple of beauty and of shape she shouldn't cope with radiation and chemo, only celebrations of birthdays with her children. A woman should be able to stand strong and show the world her power, her courage, her integrity. Strong women wear pink, not because they exhibit a disease, but because they hope for a cure and continue to believe. So while my friends were dealing with cancer, I wrote this poem, um, basically making fun of my own body. It's called Ode to My Girls. <laughs> Ode to my girls, to my sadly flattened body areas. I'm truly sorry that we are just not the large grapefruits like Nikki's. My apologies for not being the big, competent watermelons like Kim's. You are my small cher cherries, perhaps grape shapes, and are never forgotten. We won't be on the cover of Hustler or among the glossy pages of Playboy. We must live in a Haynes Her Way or Fruit of the Loom world. <laughs> Except an occasional Adidas bra. Not that anyone would notice if we hadn't been in any. We are not the enormous jugs made by surgical procedure, not the robust rack that men yearn for daily. We are not Victoria's Secret and we put Fredericks of Hollywood to shame. Someday, when I'm rich, I will approve upon your vanity. My dear girls, we must accept that over-the-shoulder boulder holder just doesn't apply to us. We are small, uh, tiny, underachievers in the world of undergarments and body image. We will survive, my girls. We will. My 34 Bs. <laughs> a gun. Like in Western and cop movies, a real 22 caliber, sometimes a 32. My mom, she's not scared. She's from a tough bed neighborhood. Growing up, my brothers would tease. When mama shoots the gun, everyone runs. The truth is, mom's gun is more privilege than protection, and those people who ran from her, they are the fastest runners of the world. You see, my mom has a gun, and she's held it above her head with her arm straight in the air at heaven's reach. My mom's been shooting fire for track and field for over 35 years. She's met 
Diane Dixon, Jackie Joyner Kirchie, Carl Lewis, all at the starting lines and the finish lines. My mom, she has a gun with plaques of citations and of rewards. She's the first United States starter ever at the Olympic Games in Atlanta, 1996. Today, I'm just standing here proud to say I'm her daughter. Robin Williams on and off the screen. Everyone's hero of, la of laughter has left us. Patch Adams, world's greatest dad, one hour photo, Mark and Mindy, now separated. The timekeeper, the night listener trapped inside the birdcage of a troubled life. This was not Sesame Street. This man dealt in drugs with depression off screen. We all wanted his happy feet. He gave us smiles. The best of times we yelled, good morning Vietnam. Fern Gurley's last rainforest had a life of up and downs. The crazy ones got canceled despite the final cut. Shakes the Clown was the angriest man in Brooklyn. Rumors he had Parkinson's. Given no choice, he had to leave us. Don't worry, be happy, Popeye, for you are at rest now. What dreams may come of us, we remember your best of times more than your drastic ending. A member of Dead Poet Society on screen, Free, free of a life of hardships off the big screen. You are at the big gates of heaven now, our true awakenings. The Fisher King lives on. We continue frequent rest stops after Mr. Stoutfire or Old Dogs. We flubber like Aladdin's genie to pee after watching the big wedding or robots. Jumanji, Insomnia, Dr. Seuss, Hook, all fan favorites. This face lives on forever as man of the year. The face of love will be goodwill hunting, cable channels, or Netflix whenever we need a laugh. Night at the museum can seize the day we will laugh on as your memory lives on being human and absolutely anything. Sandy, who passed away of March 2012. Avoid. There's an empty space, a void in my life, a spot where my friend once filled. We had memories and happiness, great moments of laughter, fun celebrations. We met in ninth grade and sang and danced in her childhood basement, went to concerts, bars, and parties together. Now, you are no longer here. One night's mistake, one wrong decision, you sacrificed it all one overdose. You left behind, leaving only your memory, one empty space, no one can replace, and no one can fill. Wow. The truth about dads, I wrote this for my friend Billy when his father passed away, because we had jokes about our fathers. <coughs> the truth about dads, it's like we've been friends forever. Jokes we told ourselves how we hated our dads. The malicious plans to leave them in wheelchairs at hospitals with notes pinned on them. The truth is, I know you loved your dad until his very end. You left work early, your mom called. He had asked for you. When cancer took over, you became the support both your mother and father needed. We laugh about it. We laughed how much we despised our dads, their cranky old man ways, nasty attitudes at our times of difficulty. No deep down inside, your heart is golden, a Celtic cross. Those cliches we told of our dad stay inside our car rides, remain untold lunch date conversations and mini golf ventures we shared. As you prepare to say goodbye to this man, your dad, who helped bring you into this world, my friend, know inside yourself how much I know you'd give anything to have him here to complain about one last time. <laughs> around the world and one of my pen pals lives in Australia so this is for her it's called spirit shoes she walks with the dance in her step black ballet shoes with bleeding red hearts decorating her friend Bev gave them to her in a will after losing a battle cancer one the note inside said Rhonda every step I will be with you in spirit she now wears spirit shoes keeping a friend's memory alive like Sam's homemade necklaces her sister Jenna had given me years ago after Sam took her life. I still remember the compliments each day, like Rhonda's new footwear. I never met Rhonda, only letters corresponding between USA and Australia. We danced together in steps of life in a spiritual connection, reminding us in every letter written how lucky we are to having had friends like these. Um, 
this next poem, my parents are Sandy survivors. They had four feet of water in their entire house. So this poem is written in honor of them. It's called Inside Her Jewelry Box. <coughs> Hurricane Sandy destroyed their home. Four feet of ocean inside 40-year-old walls. Dad hired a handyman from Home Depot. Help clean up after her aftermath. Putting their history on a curbside in Nassau Shores, Massapequa, all for a dump truck to haul away. Mom's Mercedes was among the destruction. She realized her jewelry box stolen. Her, her missing emeralds gone. She didn't want 14 carat replacements. There were mass cards inside, loved ones, important dates, and special names she wanted to remember forever. Her birthday came that Dece December, surprise to tears, giving her a new jewelry box filled with mass cards for mine. Surviving the storm was her greatest gift. Aww. special ed for over 14 years and they always inspire me. Kids always inspire me and people always inspire me. So next bunch of poems are going to be about some of the students and my job. Teacher Ed, I stand behind him not because he's incapable but because he is. He's labeled with a spectrum disorder. This doesn't make him less, it makes him more. I stand behind him and I observe his strengths, his determination over the years. His disabilities add to his character, not a limitation. He's an inspiration and not a floor. I am the shadow behind him, a silent witness, giving him the reassuring push to succeed. When he walks to the podium on graduation day to receive his diploma, I feel an overwhelming appreciation of making the difference in the life of a child in special education. Beyond Band-Aids. This got a um, Pushcart nomination in 2014. Woo! Beautiful Beyond Band-Aids. When he turned towards me at the bus window, I noticed his scratched face. The self-abusive behavior aside, I smiled and waved hello. Later, I saw you at lunch, ignored your Band-Aid cover, and called out to you, Hey, beautiful, across the lunchroom. You smiled back, and that smile belonged to me. You forgot that scratch, the anxiety, and the reasons you put it there. One crack on your skin doesn't make you broken. You are beautiful beyond band-aids or bruises. I see beauty like angry lightning storms. They paint strokes decorating the sky. I made you smile a moment, putting everyday difficulty. Wish it could have kept been there, kept for good. Wow. Educating by heart. It's all about um, the students that I've taught and experiences that I had. And so the next couple of poems are going to be for my upcoming book. Mornings in the parking lot. After two cups of coffee, hit misses of early morning teacher aides, pointless chit chatter. I stand grasping a clipboard. School buses roll in every every morning. Numbers printed on paper, I jot down the names of absent students next to their bus numbers. Mima, praying in silence, not your name today. As the wind blows my papers up, I drop the pencil to the pavement, reaching down for it. I hear the vowels and consonants that make up your name. I direct the first buses to leave, unload, then a second run, followed by a third, all the while hoping for that run-down van to pull into visitors' parking. You stepping out, glad to see me, as I, you. Despite how hard your morning was, how sleepish your night may have been, I want to be the difference in your dysfunctional autistic world. I feel purposeful alive when you arrive. Together, we can start our day. Thank you. This was one of them that I had written last April when I entered a contest, and it's called Because. Because April is Poetry Month, I write these stanzas. Because it's also Autism Awareness <laughs> Month, I tell about all about his ex spectrum disorder. Because it's important, I educate the world about one young man. Because of infomercials <laughs> for caring for neglected animals or poor children in third world countries, and never for a young man with autism slipping through cracks, I have to write this. Because everything is hard to believe, I present them in poetry anyway. Because tomorrow may be one day too late, I recite them in hopes for change. Because I was shy and quiet once, and I know that silent hearts need to be heard. Ooh.